Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Released in November of 1992 for the Sega Genesis, Mega Drive if you're a silly bloke, Sonic 2 is the sequel to the ever so popular game Sonic the Hedgehog. You run, roll, and jump through various obstacles laid out in different zones similar to the last game, but this time you have a new face to get sick of. Meet Tails, Sonic's new best friend, who can fly due to his namesake. Unfortunately, you don't get to make use of his ass copter until the next game, so you'll have to make do with seeing him use it when he's respawning. You may be able to play as Tails in the game, but he's functionally a reskin of Sonic, so the choice is based entirely on whether you want attitude or yawning in your idle animation. In terms of story, Sonic 2 expands on the story introduced in the first game. Dr. Robotnik is at it again, turning animals into badniks like the flaccid set of dentures he is. This time, though, he's also constructing a device in space called the Death Egg, which is designed exclusively for copyright infringement. You and your new buddy Tails, armed with an airplane for some reason, must go bust that Eggman wide open in order to stop him from obtaining the seven Chaos Emeralds. Don't worry about why there are seven now, it just needed to match Dragon Ball Z a little closer. On from the plot, Sonic 2 features ten new zones, as opposed to the first game's six. And the act number has been shortened from three to two. Let me tell you, this is probably the entire reason Sonic 2 is better than Sonic 1. Sonic also has a new move in his arsenal, the Spin Dash. Just rev it up and you'll go flying into pits in no time. The Spin Dash is the whole reason I want to get out of bed every morning. The zones are as follows. Emerald Hill is like Green Hill, but even better. Tons more places to move quickly, and it just feels more vibrant and colorful in general. Chemical Plant is where the men were separated from the boys. If you couldn't get past the Mega Muck in Act 2, then everyone knew you were an easy target. Aquatic Ruin is like if they took Labyrinth Zone and made the water optional, and then managed to make it even more optional. Casino Night is so fun and colorful, best way to start a gambling addiction. Hilltop Zone is kind of mad to me. They took Emerald Hill Zone, made it blue, slow, and added lava. Oh, and they put a fly right next to your ear. Mystic Cave is absolutely awesome. Putting you in a deep, dark cave, having you explore, and hitting you with that jazzy banger in the background while you navigate the depths within? That's what I call a fun time. Oil Ocean is like a desert level, but with a fire hazard. Metropolis Zone. It's like they were saving every single piece of Sonic 1 for this particular level. There are slow parts, enemies in awful places, lava, and three acts of this garbage. Sky Chase is an auto-scroller level in a Sonic game. That goes about as well as you'd expect. Wing Fortress is the airship leading to the final zone. I don't have too much to say about it, but there is a neat glitch where you can pop through a fan and skip a good chunk of it. The Death Egg Zone is just two bosses. One against the Silver Robotic Sonic, and one against this guy, the Death Egg Robot. A grueling 12-hit slog of a boss that will take you hours on your first attempt because of extraordinarily wonky hitboxes. Oh, and of course, the music is entirely composed of bangers and bops. Don't believe me? Here's an example. Okay, they can't all be winners. Of course, I touched on it in the first game, but this game has special stages too, and these ones are vastly superior to the first game's offerings. This time, you go through a 3D half-pipe collecting rings to try to nab the emeralds at the end. While better than Sonic 1's utter abomination of the special stage, it's still not especially great. It's completely memorization-based. However, this time, there is a good reason to finish them all. By collecting all seven Chaos Emeralds in the game, you become... Super Sonic! Who runs faster, jumps higher, and is entirely invulnerable to enemies. While sometimes Sonic's DBZ-inspired super form can make the game a little hard to navigate, it's still an incredibly fun time and a great reward for a completionist, unlike the slightly different ending you get in the previous game. Overall, Sonic 2 is a massive improvement on the first game in basically every way. I give it a 7 out of 10.